Hey guys, it's Josh Del Sol. For those of you that are on a mailing list, you know that we're uh, in the latter stages now of the follow-up project to Take Back Your Power. And um, I just want to ask you something. Have you ever felt compelled to do something? Well, it was like that for me with Take Back Your Power. It's like this, it's like that for me with this follow-up project. And it's also like this about this video that I'm just about to share with you now. I've taken a couple days in the past week and put this um, edit together of something which the world really needs to know about. And that's how uh, the FCC is planning and uh, have already approved uh, 5G technology. Now I know what you're thinking, 5G technology, it's just the next level of, of evolution in, uh, in cell phone communications and we're just gonna have better uh, you know, bandwidth and be able to have uh, support for more applications and so forth. But if you've seen Take Back Your Power, you know that there are very, very serious um, health risks associated with the proliferation of wireless technology, be it smart meters, be it cell phones, cell phone towers, um, thousands of studies indicate harm. So with this 5G, there are some very, very serious things to be concerned about, both from a, from a health standpoint and also from a surveillance and rights standpoint. So this piece that you're about to watch is going to get into something that, uh, again, the world needs to know about. Last Thursday at the, in Washington, D.C., at the uh, FCC rubber stamping approval meeting for this so-called 5G technology, at that meeting, there were four very interesting and powerful things that happened. Two of them have to do with suppression of free speech and truth uh, that we all need to know about, and two of them have to do actually with um, with truth getting injected uh, into the into the narrative here and on the record in a very powerful way. Okay, so what we're dealing with is the Gestapo is in the United States. They are basically running the, the show for, I mean, most of you already know this. This isn't really news to anyone. We're, we, we're living in a corporatocracy. But the extent of the harm that's being caused, uh, both to our rights and to truth and to our health, is far worse than what we, we, we had imagined. So this is all going somewhere. I want to um, uh, encourage you that there are solutions, both at the end of this video and in the, in the movement and the awareness that's all unfolding from this. But you guys, check this out. And, um, and uh, we invite you to subscribe to our mailing list at takebackyourpower.net. We're bringing this conversation forward. But, uh, but I, I hope you uh, enjoy and are inspired by, but also really pissed off at what's actually going on here and get activated to, to be part of the solution. So thank you and we'll talk to you soon. The big game changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines, and they do not go through physical objects as well. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals. Now to make this work, five, the 5G build out is going to be very infrastructure intensive, requiring massive deployment of small cells. I'm confident that the actions will lead to a cornucopia of unanticipated innovative uses and will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important because it means that US companies will be the first out of the gate. And that is why 5G is a national priority and stay out of the way of technological development. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. The future has a way of inventing itself. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to define the future. We won't wait for the standards. We're already seeing the industry gearing up to seize this opportunity. Verizon and AT&T tell us they'll begin deploying 5G trials in 2017. And the first commercial deployments they're talking about are expected in 2020. And we're not done. 
As part of our July 14 action, we also plan to ask for comments on opening up other high-frequency bands. Many of the high-frequency bands that we will make available for 5G currently have some satellite users, as well as some Defense Department applications, or at least the possibility of future satellite and defense users. This means sharing will be required between satellite and terrestrial wireless, an issue that is especially relevant in the 28 gigahertz band. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. If something can be connected, it will be connected. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. A lot more antenna sighting decisions by local governments and tightened our shot clock for sighting application reviews. America's local governments will play an important role in determining how we fulfill this national priority. You can be sure of only one thing. The biggest Internet of Things application has yet to be imagined. Tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important. Ask a question, we'll start with you. Sir. Needn't egg me on on this one. Uh, moments ago, I was attempting to talk to some people who came to attend the meeting and have concerns about radiation and 5G. And uh, one of your security force uh, uh, intervened, uh, told the guy he couldn't show me the T-shirt that he had wished to display at the meeting, forced him to put it away, and confiscated my FCC-issued ID. Is this consonant with the discussion that ought to be taking place here? And what's your reaction to this action by your staff? I've just heard about it for the first time, Todd. I mean, obviously, this is an open meeting, uh, you know, and I'm sure that if your uh, if your credentials have uh, have been mistakenly uh, taken, uh, you will get them back. But there is a responsibility for uh, everybody who comes here to behave responsibly. By approving the Spectrum Frontiers order, the United States becomes the first country in the world to identify and open up vast amounts of high frequency spectrum for 5G networks and applications. This is the most significant step yet. And uh, our BDS proceeding is dealing with that issue. Lydia. Hey, Tom, with the NCP study showing wireless causes cancer subthermally, how can you proceed with more wireless expansion with our 60 standards only recognizing thermal effects, ignoring thousands <coughs> of studies showing cancerous effects, neurological effects, reproductive harm, immune Lydia, do you, have a, do you have a question? I do have a question, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Okay, I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer your question, Lydia. Lydia Bayou, Bloomberg BNA. Can you just let us know what happened there and uh, your role in those events and uh, what's the significance there? 
Yeah, I call this G Day for the 5G being rolled out. We try to uh, hold up a sign and inform them about wireless radiation causes cancer. While they were, before they were making their decision, the sign was taken away from us. Um, I then tried to grab a, a shirt out of my bag just to hold that up, sitting in my seat very, very innocently. And um, the the head of security there threatened me and tried to grab my shirt and. Uh, we kind of struggled with that. So, so you um, didn't even get the shirt out of your bag, or you it wasn't even displayed yet, or anything. And the guy was and just the sign, on. sign wasn't displayed, shirt wasn't displayed. He was really, really quite, quite on us. Um, and he watched us the rest of the time. Uh, right, we're sitting right in front of us, just like a hawk, and uh, threatened to kick us out uh, many, many times. Wow. So what uh, happened uh, when the when uh, Todd, the journalist, uh, came over to talk to you? Okay. So the uh, the hearing actually they vote and the hearing's over. It's uh, recessed, and people are just talking and hanging out before there's a press conference starting in about, I think it was about 15 minutes later. Okay. So one of the members of the press came over to ask us what happened, because they were near where they took away the sign. Uh, the woman who was holding up the sign was explaining what it said, and um, I actually was talking to some of the media already, and uh, I saw her talking with that media, and I w walked over. And he asked me, you know, what was on the sign, and I told him. And then he asked me, uh, I hear they took your, they wanted to take your shirt. What was on that? And I said, oh, I'll show it to you. And I reached into my bag to grab the shirt to show it to him. Now, mind you, the meeting's over, and we're just sitting around. And uh, the director of security came over, said, if I take the shirt out of the bag, uh, he'll throw me out once again. And um, the reporter explained he was just answering, I was just answering his question. I was just showing it to him. And uh, he told the reporter if he didn't, uh, if he took that, if I took that shirt out, he would throw me out and the reporter. Wow. And this is a reporter from Bloomberg uh, who re reports from Bloomberg News. And uh, he reminded uh, the security, uh, the director of security, who he was. And um, he again told him he would kick him out. And then uh, the reporter asked for his name and position and wrote it down. And they went back and forth. Uh, and eventually he took away his press credential. The T-shirt said, and it's kind of relevant to being here in Cleveland for the Republican National Convention, LeBron James um, had a salivary gland tumor where he holds his cell phone. Who's next? And on the back it said, World Health Organization classifies microwave radiation as a class 2B carcinogen. So that's the one, uh, that was on the T-shirt. And I think it's important because it shows the power of the media to control information and, and dialogue about this issue. Because yeah. most people don't know that LeBron James had a salivary gland tumor removed from his jaw and it took six hours to get out of his jaw um, and could have killed him um, in the operation. Um, but it was a non-malignant tumor, so he, he went on. And it was right after the playoffs in 2009. Um, and in two, there was two articles, if people Google LeBron James spring surgery, you'll find the two articles, but in one of them it says, at the end, how come no one else is writing about this issue? Um, if this guy wears the wrong T-shirt, it's international news. This guy had a tumor that could have killed him, um, and no one's talking about it. So it shows the power of the media to control this. And what's really sad is after he had this tumor, um, he became a sponsor for Samsung huh. cell phones, and uh, now he's a big uh, promoter of um, Beat wireless headsets exposing more young children um, to wireless radiation to the head and possibly causing the same kind of salivary gland tumor that he had. And you can bet that that's by design, right? Well, however many tens of millions of dollars he got for that contract was a little bit of insurance on their part, I'm sure. Yeah, I think they, and oh, that's what I was going to mention before, is I don't think they seep into this. I think there's a very conscious effort and plan um, to fund the people that might cause problems. I think they go to the PTA. We had a problem getting and to the PTA and talking about this issue. They kicked us out of the conference and we were paid exhibitors um, because they helped fund that conference. And with all these wireless projects, people need to understand everyone gets paid on them. Um, you know, if city puts in wireless, uh, they get extra money for other technology projects. Um, um, everyone along the way gets a piece of it and everyone stays quiet as a result and in the end uh, our health is being sold out uh, sold down the road and sometimes not for very much sometimes pennies per person when you consider uh, the, a natural a national contribution I mean Tom Wheeler delivered a 
campaign contribution of $700,000 to President Obama, and then he was nominated chairman of the FCC about a month later. Yeah. You break that down per person, it's just pennies. Are they scared of the truth coming out about the the harm that 5G is going to cause and, and wireless? Is that I mean that this that this big NTP government sponsored twenty five million dollar study just came out right last month and so I, what's what's happening with regards to that? Is that why they're going to these draconian measures? You yes, ask why they're not answering question, why they're afraid uh, to talk to us. And that's exactly the question I asked Commissioner Riley. You know, he came off the stage, he was the last to speak, and he came off the stage and um, I just went towards him. Immediately the security guy was jumping in between us. And, um, but you know, I was not moving, security guy could not move, so O'Reilly could not move so I could speak. Um, and then I told him, I mean, why you're not answering my question? Why you're not, uh, uh, I mean, I'm the public, I'm the taxpayer, I'm paying your salary, how come you're not answering my questions. What is it that you're hiding? What are you afraid of? Answer the question. Just answer the question. Yeah. And, you know, he was silent. And that, um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, they, they clearly are aware of the NTP study. They're clearly aware of so many people getting sick. They're clearly aware that they have been lying to the public for decades. They're clearly aware that there are thousands of research papers uh, uh, proving that this technology harm. So there's no way they're not aware of that. So they know that. Why they're doing it? I mean, how can someone be that evil? I cannot understand. And um, and do I think that they're now moving forward very fast because of the studies? It's very high likelihood. I do think that they know, and in our presence there was another indication to that, that, that we're not going to be silent anymore. Science is, is becoming more and more loud on this. Yeah. Scientists are becoming more loud. They, this is bound to explode. And so I guess they do understand that if they move forward fast, it would be much more difficult to take things backwards. So could be. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a mind reader, but yeah, could be. The whole event was this very, very sad portray of how things work, mm -hmm. how government executive act, on how industry control things, and how the public health is being um ignored and how the public interests are being ignored by the party it's very very sad to portray isn't it amazing how an industry talking head like like tom wheeler chairman of the fcc would dare to to call out someone who's taking a t-shirt out of his bag to voice a concern about what the agency is doing call that as irresponsible, irresponsible, right? If your credentials have uh, have been mistakenly uh, taken, uh, you will get them back. But there is a responsibility for uh, everybody who comes here to behave responsibly. Meanwhile, they're set to roll out technology, which is going to harm everyone on ways in which you know, we don't even know. But the science is really clear that. <laughs> it's 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 unbelievable. Like the the, the double speak, the Orwellian, you know. Listen, it's as it's I crazy. Said, is, it's crazy. This is, as I said, this is uh, you know I, I speak every day, hours to people, adults and children whose life just got destroyed by becoming sick with this technology. I speak to children who wants to commit suicide and die, and you know it's very difficult those conversations and. And it's also very difficult because many times I cannot do more to help. And, and, and it's just a very, very, you feel like constant heavy weight on your shoulders, on your heart. Like sometimes I speak to people, I cannot breathe. And because I don't know how to help. And, but living with electrosensitivity, and I was severely electrosensitive, and living with, you know, people's stories every day and night, it's difficult. But for me personally, more difficult is uh, seeing how this lie has been perpetuated so successfully, how people can harm other people in such an evil way. And I'm sorry to say, this is pure evil. And the fact that this technology is so amazing, and I love this technology before I got sick, and I still think that if it was not harmful, it is the most amazing, amazing technology, and, and it can be so useful to humans. But when you know what it does, and, and, and use all kind of slogans, smarts, to get people addicted and, 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 and into it. And when you know what it does and how sick it makes people and how 
it destroys children's lives and 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 the future hunt it, it there's no other word to describe it except evil so this is for me the more difficult thing to like i can handle the stress of the being sick of the stress of the other sick people the fact that this evil can happen is, is is very difficult for me and you know i'm jewish and um you know we all carry that uh, heavy weight of the holocaust and since i was a child i was constantly you know it, it had a huge impact on my life mm -hmm. and uh for many in, in various ways and i remember i always wanted to i mean what what you learn from it is that bad things can happen when people are silent yeah when people comply when people don't stand up to evil and this is my message really i mean we all have to stand up and we all have we all have to show huge determination we're finding really strong forces and we're very small compared to them but it's maybe a cliche but you know it's, it's all it takes to put light in the room is one candle to take away the darkness and everyone has to stand up and stop being afraid stop waste your time on Facebook posting, take action, do something, inform Congress, fight Congress. I mean, speak up and do something. Yeah. So what do you think about the concept of um, individual accountability and liability, for example, for the, the people making these harmful decisions um, and, and the people of, of this country and other countries actually, you know, using techniques of individual accountability uh, going forward? Yeah, so, I think all of this evil that we're now facing is successful because in the past we did not stop this. I mean, we allow this kind of uh, a system used by industry to put toxic into the environment in various ways, and we didn't take the lessons and we didn't do what we should have done. And what we should have done was pursue those who did this crime all the way and only when we demand accountability there will be a lesson to be learned for the future until there is personal accountability and liability this systematic problem that repeats itself will happen again and again and again and it has been so we learned um, that the defago industry was lying to the public bluntly to the public to the government to health organizations without without any hesitation regarding the addictiveness of this of tobacco and and how harmful it is to people and did any was anyone sued no was anyone found personally accountable no so that's actually what enabled this kind of behavior to happen again and again and not just that it seems like those industry who put this toxic out there for us are becoming more and more an expert so they're learning from what the, those industries, those other industries who did it, did and just learn their guidebook and, and, and make it even better. So if you look at the actions of the wireless industry, it does, it does exactly what, it has been doing exactly what the tobacco industry is doing to the latter, and it's actually making it even better the way they do it. So um, this will continue, this systematic problem will continue. This problem of um, uh, conflict of interest where people who work for industry now regulate the same industries they used to work for, just like uh, Tom Wheeler is now, who used to have the wireless industry organization, is now the regulator of that industry. Right. So um, this will continue to enable those people to do this harm and, and, and to do them again the next time. You see that the industry is using the same scientists it used to say that tobacco is not harmful, to say now that wild technology is not harmful. So unless we will make sure that those who created that harm for the industry are found accountable, and those people in the government who did not do their job and protected the public interest and health will be found accountable, we will continue and have the same thing happen again and again and again. And I remember the first interview I gave on this topic was to an Israeli paper. And um, and I said it very clearly that I less care about the industry. I more care about pursuing those people in governments who did not do their job, who betrayed the public trust. And I think this is the action we should take. And we should make clear to those government people. Or, you know, if you, if you talk about Wi-Fi in schools and the head, um, you know, the, the school principals, 
who do have personal responsibility and liability to protect the children's health, mm -hmm. to make sure they know they will be fine, personally liable for the harm they cause. They have a, a position of trust and they betray that trust and they should be fined liable. Civil, civil, I mean, it should be civil liability and criminal liability because harming people and assaulting them with this, it's an actual assault with this technology. You're causing physical harm, you're causing physical pain. And then if you know that you do it and you continue to ignore it, that even makes it worse. So we all have to find ways to make those who cause this harm accountable. Until we do that, nothing will change. Yeah, very well said. What is your uh, point of entrance into this? So my background is as a medical social worker. And when I was in the hospitals, I saw, uh, you know, young salesmen, lawyers coming in with brain tumors and healthy otherwise other than the tumor and doctors asking them about their cell phone use. So I was clued in very early with these heavy users and the tumors it was causing. Um, and then I had um, several colleagues of mine develop brain tumors in their 30s and uh, very healthy individuals otherwise. Another colleague who developed uh, a tumor in her in her breast uh, where she put the phone in her bra and she lost her breast. And um, then um, I was in uh, working in my school district and they're planning on rolling out uh, school-wide Wi-Fi and I had done the research uh, because of my colleagues getting sick and um, I knew it was a bad thing and I started uh, fighting with a school district not to do it and go wired instead of wireless and I fought almost three years providing them the information they needed to make a good decision and uh, I was simply ignored by the teachers union at Los Angeles Unified School District and by the school board at Los Angeles Unified School District and um, I couldn't get the parents rallied as well, although I didn't have the resources really to do that. Um, and it's really sad because now I'm hearing from Los Angeles Unified School District teachers that they're getting electrosensitive, developing neurological symptoms, and um, other teachers developing cancer about a year after they put in the new Wi-Fi because it's a very, uh, schools are now are, most dangerous places to be. You have 20 to 40 wireless transmitters in their iPads and um, and wireless laptops, and then you have two to three in LA Unified's three wire commercial grade wireless routers per room, and then you have each room with the same thing and it all multiplying. Um, so you have really the setting of the most the most significant exposure in our country, and the most vulnerable population being exposed are small children, which we know are three to four times as sensitive to all environmental hazards. I think uh, more and more um, uh, researchers, doctors, parents, uh, and, and those who um, are in the position of power to do something about this are beginning to realize this. But um, this is, I mean, what's happening to our, to our kids and what, what the electromagnetic radiation, the proliferation of it is, is, is causing, I mean, Everything up until this point really could potentially only be the tip of the iceberg, right? With this rollout, this uh, planned rollout of 5G, which was just approved. Yeah, we are uh, microwaving our population and wondering why our cancer is going through the roof and uh, people aren't feeling as well and the chronic disease is going through the roof. Uh, it's really very sad. So, we, yeah, we want to... Um, basically make it really clear if you're watching this and if you want to do something about this go to the link that's at the end of this video it's going to be a bunch of information links and 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 a specific specifically an action link for you to take right now it's going to be at the top of the um, the section beneath this video so Kevin I want to thank you so much for everything you're doing uh, thanks for your time and speaking to us today and uh, we wish you um, you know the success in, in continuing to to be among the front lines of, of those getting this truly life-saving information out to everyone. Yeah, and, and as a closing statement, I really, uh, I really beg people to take action. And even if you don't see the link at the end of the website, you know, you know where all the congressmen are, the House of Representatives, the Senate, you know where all the committees are. Go, go, be a, educate them, go like the wireless industry goes time after time. Go to the FCC. The FCC, I think, is visited 500 times per year, and it's like twice a day, you figure, on average. 
by the industry and you know we have our information we need to go as well but especially to our representatives who are supposed to represent us and protect us they need to see that it's a glaring problem and what you will see is that they're getting sick as well I spoke to Congressman Grayson from Florida and while I was talking to him one of his uh, staffers Joe came up to me and said what are you talking about I said I'm talking about wireless cell phones causing brain tumors he said that's interesting because I had a brain aneurysm and I'm lucky to be alive and then he said it's also interesting because my buddy just died from a brain tumor so you know they're heavy users up here and um, wow. you can you'll find that you know they're suffering too and we need to build on that because we're at the we're past the point of potential harm we're at the point of harm you know it's there's 10 to 15 years for tumor growth we're we're there as a group and we're doing nothing but making it worse so people are definitely getting sick and you need to ask them you know does your face tingle when you uh, use your cell phone do your hands tingle when you use cell phone do you have difficulty sleeping um, have you ever gotten nauseous using the phone um, do you feel funny when you're around Wi-Fi or getting close to it um, and you'll be surprised people are getting sick for instance I spoke to Congressman Rush Congressman Rush has a sal had a salivary gland tumor which Israel has associated with cell phone use mm -hmm. I spoke to one staff office and uh, one of the staff members, a very young woman, went by me with a, like, a, like a cane. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't mean to be nosy because we were done talking. I don't mean to be nosy, but what's wrong with you? She says, I have this rare immune system disorder and it's basically eating my spine. And uh, I said, well, you should look at reducing your wireless, you know, your wireless radiation exposure mm -hmm. because for some people it makes the immune system just go berserk. Um, and it could save your life and it's a relatively easy thing to do to reduce your exposure mm -hmm. and she listened to me and she says you know I'll think about that it never hurts to reduce my exposure so um, yeah, we need to reach out and educate this community and we need to do it now time is time is gone time to wait is over uh, we need to stop this before they auction this spectrum um, we need to, you need to go whether it's by yourself or with others you need to go yeah Thank you. Uh, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, thank you, Kevin. Uh, there you heard it. We got our marching orders. We know what to do. There's links below. Kevin, thank you so much, and we'll look forward to uh, your future updates. All right. God bless, and everyone take care of themselves, and let's take care of everyone else as well. Absolutely. Bye, you guys. Moments like this are made for a billion. Stand Counted one, two, three. Mm -hmm. We made a promise to live in peace and be honest. War after war with no end in sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ocean to ocean. Peace and love revolution Take my hand and we'll hold the light Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time to stand up If you're with me, put your hands up
Then I throw my stupid cell phone away I sell everything I got on eBay And unplug from this collective mind I'll head for a seat Searching for an island perfect for me Only to find this brave new world isn't free So I'll build a rocket to outer space Find a new place I need to stop orbiting other people's planets I know That says we'll be this soon But I'll never let them take this place from me You see I need to stop Orbiting other people's planets I know Be bound by 